Hey guys, how are you going and welcome to your second Svelte tutorial. So this one is going to be covering just the basics of a Svelte component as well as taking a look at a simple Hello World example. Okay, but just a heads up, if you haven't seen the first video, um, I recommend you watch that one because um, that one takes you through uh, the basics or the required steps of setting up a Svelte uh, application as well as the development environment. So once you've watched the first video in this series, you're going to be left with an application structure that looks something like this. Okay, so the first step is to run npm install to install all of our dependencies if you haven't already done so. And once that's complete, we can then simply run npm run dev in order to start up the development server. Okay, so upon running that, we can then head to localhost on port 5000 in the browser and it's going to give us this right here. So this is the application running. So of course now if we make changes to the code, it's going to be uh, you know reflected in the browser right here. But first, let's have a look at the application or the directory structure for the application. So right here we have the public directory and we have the index.html. So this one right here is the main HTML for the application itself. And as we can see, it includes a few files. So firstly, we have this global.css. So this one allows you to define your own uh, global CSS styles. So for the purposes of uh, all of these tutorials in this series, uh, we can simply remove this file because we're not going to be using global CSS files for this series. Okay, so let's uh, re uh, let's remove that line right there, as well as removing the global.css file. Okay, we've also got here this bundle.css. So this one contains all of the generated CSS from your Svelte components. So of course, that one right there is quite important to keep. And the second one here is our bundle.js. And this one contains all of the JavaScript code for our Svelte components for, of course, the browser to then read and, of course, execute. Okay, so we're going to keep all of that stuff right there also. And we can move on to the source directory uh, right inside here. And this one contains our main.js. So this one, as the name suggests, is the main.js file. Now, on the first line, it includes the root Svelte components. Okay, so this one is called app, and then it is simply just creating a new instance of the root Svelte components called app. And it is basically just saying here that we have a target of document.body. So that just means that we're using the document body as the main wrapper for the Svelte application. So going back inside the public directory right here in the index HTML, that body refers to the body tags right down here. So basically the application is gonna live inside there. Okay, so that is what that target line does. Now, the second one here with these props, we're going to be covering props in a future tutorial. So we're going to simply remove that line right there and we're going to keep it like that. So like I said, this is simply just starting up the Svelte application, including the root component right there. So uh, moving on to the app.svelte, the root component, it looks like this. Okay, so as we can see, um, if you've came from a from a Vue.js background, you're going to be familiar or you're going to recognize this sort of structure. So we have up here the JavaScript for the components, then we have the HTML, and then we have the CSS right down here. So typically, you actually, you're actually going to have the HTML at the bottom of the CSS. So typically, you're going to be following this structure right here. You have the JavaScript, then you have the CSS, then you have the HTML right down there. Okay, so Let's remove all of the HTML for the components right there and also all of the CSS for the components right there and lastly all of the JavaScript. Okay, so now saving this we're going to start with a clean slate for a hello world example. So going back inside the browser we can see of course the page is now empty. Okay, so let's go back inside here and we're going to begin by declaring a variable right up here for our hello world example. So we can say let name is equal to Dom just to say, hey, my name is Dom. Okay, so now going inside the HTML, we can reference the name variable by simply saying h1 and we can say hello. Then using curly braces, we can pass through name right inside here. 
So now saving this and uh, going uh, inside the browser, we can see of course now it says hello DOM. Okay, so that is how to reference your variables from up here down inside your HTML. Now, this is, um, this is of course also reactive. So for example, if I was to now uh, say set timeout and then I say something like this, where I'm essentially changing my name. So if I say name is equal to something like Bobby, okay, then I do after four seconds. So basically after four seconds, change my name to Bobby. If I save this and then wait four seconds, my name is going to change to Bobby right there in the browser and it indeed does. So as we can see, it is fully reactive in that sense. Okay, now you can actually put whatever JavaScript you want inside of these curly braces. So for example, I can say something like this where I declare a variable called A and I'll make that equal to 10. Then I can do for example uh, B and I'll make this equal to 20. And then I can simply just say something like, uh, I can just say A plus B is equal to, then in curly braces, I can just say A plus B right there. And now if I was to save this, we can see now of course we get A plus B is equal to 30 or to take it a step further, I can even say something like in curly braces now, I can say A plus B is equal to 30, this time of course giving us 10 plus 20 is equal to 30. Okay, so that right there just demonstrates that you can put whatever JavaScript you want inside these curly braces. Okay, so. Moving on, I want to show you one last thing when it comes to um, outputting your, uh, you know, your uh, variables and things like that. So, um, if you want to output actual HTML, you need to flag it as being so. So, for example, if I was to say something like this, so I can say let's um, let's just do uh, let's uh, my HTML is equal to. Then I say something like uh, this strong. Then I say uh, decode, for example. Um, if I now then uh, try to output the my HTML, we can see it gives us the actual text form. Okay, so if you want to include the actual HTML, um, you can quite simply just add at HTML right here, and now your text is going to be interpreted as HTML. So now we can see we get that right there. Now, that's a pretty poor example because of course I'm using an H1. So let's make this a div and I can say, um, you know, some other text. Then I can uh, refresh or uh, go back in the browser and it says some other text then decode. So um, that is how to essentially, um, you know, uh, prevent the escaping of your HTML. Now, just keep in mind that you probably don't want to do this in most cases, but if you need to, um, let's say you're using an icon library, which, you know, exports SVG, something like that, you may need to do this, but in most cases, try to avoid this right here because it can open you up to um, XSS vulnerabilities, okay, or cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. So that right there is a simple Hello World example using Svelte. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.